the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a <laughs> Thursday. Interesting topic, one that I think a lot of you probably have strong opinions on, something that uh, has made news in uh, recent days with regard to adoption, an adoption bill, really the first piece of legislation really to make its way through this new session here in the state of Tennessee. And it's, uh, I thought some say it's an anti-LGBT adoption bill. Basically what it will do is place uh, limits or prohibit Oh, I guess, how do I put this? It's hard to, to kind of get into the nuts and bolts of exactly what it'll do. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to defer to my guest this morning, who is someone who opposes this, this um, but I think uh, can lay out her thoughts on why this is not a good idea. I want to remind folks, too, and we discuss this more later in future shows, we'll have folks on that are in support of the bill. So let's be real clear on this. But Abby Rubenfeld, attorney locally, here is with us. Good morning to you, ma'am. Good morning. It's nice. I think I, I think I could muddle through it, but I think you could do a better job mm -hmm. of um, just impartially first laying out what you say this bill does. Well, I believe what this bill does from its language is that it allows discrimination by adoption agencies that receive state funds, and mm -hmm. that's wrong. We have, this isn't really a religious protection bill. We already have religious protections, starting with the First Amendment to the Constitution that prohibits um, the establishment of religion, but also interfering with religion. And we have state and federal laws that protect religious freedom. So this bill is unnecessary, it's discriminatory by intention, and it's going to hurt children and hurt our state. It's going to limit um, the ability, there's going to be children that won't get homes. There won't be as many people out there available exactly. to be able to adopt. Right, and the business community doesn't support it. It's going to hurt us nationally. The message that we send, especially because it was the first bill adopted right by our the legislature, the tone that sets and the message it sends is that Tennessee is not a welcoming state. And that's not what we want. That's not what businesses want. Adoption agencies and any business can discriminate uh, all they want as long as they don't violate state or federal law if they don't get federal, federal or state That's funds. That's really when they the heart of it, exactly. okay? Okay, so there, we're talking about faith-based foster care or adoption agencies that may choose to exclude LGBT, right. you know, but it's families it's based on religious beliefs. Right, but it's broader than that. It doesn't, they, you know, they tried to hide the discrimination by saying moral beliefs, what they say, moral convictions, mm -hmm. um, which, so what if an agency or a person that works at an agency is against interfaith marriages or interracial marriages? If that's their moral belief, then that that's then they, a big they, umbrella, isn't it? Can they deny placements to a family that has a Jewish parent and a Christian parent? Mm -hmm. Like the the what, this could just go on and on and on. And people would say, well, there's constitutional protections. Well, there's constitutional protections for all religious discrimination already because right, yeah, they're protected. Supporters will say, and I think the governor who signed it would say, this is you know for protecting religious freedom, and it's meaning not. that they have freedom. Yeah, but th the way I look at it. To some degree, is the the real issue here is taxpayer funding. All exactly. right. Exactly. If there's a face-based foster care agency or adoption agency that chooses to exclude certain peoples, right, they and are not taking public money, they have every right to, exactly. to be be behind their convictions. Exactly. The difference here would be that if they are, and do many of them indeed take federal funding? Um, to your knowledge, I think a lot of them do get taxpayer money. I'm not sure federal or state, but I think that well. Yes, there are a lot of religious agencies, and I do think they get, because they work with DCS, mm -hmm. they, they get. Okay, they so they get. get some of those monies. So, all right, this is not the first state to do this. No. I mean, and there have been legal challenges in most of the other states. I know yes. Illinois, Michigan had to actually go back on it. South Carolina has one pending right now. Well, yes. Very definitely. similar to this. ACLU is looking at this now here. Um, all right, so what, what do you really think this is about then? I think it's about discrimination, and I think that people, I think that there's people in our legislature that are intent on imposing their religious beliefs on everybody. And meaning that you would say that they don't like the idea of a same-sex couple having the ability to adopt a child. Right. There's people that still think they don't, we shouldn't have the ability to marry, even though the United States Supreme Court 
said mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. Here in Tennessee, there's people who are still trying to stop that five years after the fact. And again, if someone happens to believe that way, that's they're entitled to their beliefs. Exactly. The issue, again, more is that there's, and why it's separation. You kind of think about separation. You know, why is there not prayer in schools? And I know a lot of people like the idea of hey, maybe having prayer in schools. Well, whose prayer is it going to be? If there's taxpayer money going into that, there shouldn't be just one religion, not just yours. It's got to be someone else. Are you going to let all the prayer go in there? When I was a child, I yeah. remember getting sent out of the classroom because I was Jewish when they said a prayer. Yeah, that's like, wrong. That's wrong. That's just flat exactly. wrong. So you understand that. I'm not against prayer. Actually, um, uh, you know, I, I understand there are many that do pray quietly when they have si exactly. moments of silence at school, which you're totally entitled to. Exactly. just shouldn't be led by a teacher with a specific religion. Right. That's the problem. Because I mean, whose religion is it going to be? I understand that. So in this case, it's, it's the taxpayer money that comes into play. And they're trying, this bill would protect them if they chose to do this. And there was a challenge to say, well, let's take away the taxpayer money because you're excluding right. these this gay would, couples. This would allow them to get taxpayer money and then exclude whoever they want that they claim their moral convictions. It doesn't even necessarily say religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. Moral convictions. Moral convictions can be pretty broad based. Uh, do you have any inkling as to how many same-sex couples um, adopt in the state? Is there, is there I, a I don't statistic have on this? Is it a lot? A little? I, I don't I have don't any statistics on that, but I know just from <coughs> personal experience and just anecdotally from my own practice, a lot of gay couples, just like a lot of non-gay couples, mm -hmm. adopt children for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, th these days, um, lesbian and gay couples can have their own children biologically. I mean, they can do that with assisted reproduction. You know, there are ways to do that, but there are still a lot of adoptions, and the, we have to remember the focus is on children. Mm -hmm. Adoptions are about finding homes for children that don't have loving homes, and there's, like, so many of them. I don't have the statistics, don't ask. Mm -hmm. But we but know so many children are in foster care. We know care. there's hundreds yeah. of children in foster care desperately needing homes, and if they have two loving competent adults that want to adopt them into a family like why would anyone be against that like you know all the myths about gay people are going to convert their children all those kinds of things are ridiculous mm -hmm. I mean most of us who are gay had non-gay parents didn't make us not be gay I mean all those things are myths and you know you can have those beliefs you can deny adoptions if that's what you want and hurt children but you can't do it with taxpayer dollars and this has come up now and the lawmakers get to it but I'm just guessing is it not I mean would you believe some faith-based agencies were already doing this perhaps oh, yes. it's, it's been going on that maybe some faith-based adoption agencies have been kind of going away from allowing adoptions involving same-sex couples that's been going on right. you believe. and so you think this is a reaction to the fact that some of these couples now taking legal action I don't know if it's a reaction or just part of a, an agenda to, you know, try to narrow rights for uh, gay people. I mean, that's honestly what I think it's about. And I'll, I think it's important to emphasize two things. Adoption's about protecting and helping children. And secondly, we already have, like, major, major, major protections um, for religious freedom. Like these agencies are not being discriminated against. There's a federal constitution, there's a state law, there's a federal law that protect religious freedom. If they are being discriminated against for valid religious beliefs, they already have protections and they already have means to pursue recourse. This is completely unnecessary and um, and, what, and what would there be a recourse? So you're saying religious freedoms, meaning the governor signed this, and the thinking would be, all right, I want to have this in place because if this is an agency that chooses not to adopt out to a um, same-sex couple, all right, then that same-sex couple may make a complaint to it. Well, they're choosing not to do this based on their religious convictions. And so would they be protected under any existing law, <laughs> considering the fact that they're taking federal funding anyway, state or federal um, funding? It, 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 no, I don't think they would. Because I know what you're saying. You're we have religious freedoms. We but, yeah. have religious freedoms, but our legislatures, federal and state, have already dealt with these issues and developed a remedy. This is just so adding is an extra level that seems more pointedly um, discriminatory. So what you're saying is you think that this this actually 
protects them and allows them to discriminate. I think absolutely. And right. I think the intent is to allow them to discriminate. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, we have some phone calls coming in, 737-7587, if you thought an opinion on this. want to make it clear, of course, it's very obvious, uh, Abby's take on all of this. We will have the other side of the issue coming on this program as well to talk about why they like the idea in a future program. So we'll be fair and even on that. But uh, today, that's the focus. But your calls can go anyway. What do you think? We'll take a break and be back with more right after this.